MGM Grand in Las Vegas with Eddie Rabbit. Would you welcome Mr. David Brenner? Lava all over the back is yes. terrible. Ejected. <laughs> yes, ejected. I suppose you know of a volcano bigger than ours. One in China. One in it? Definitely was much bigger. Uh -huh. it, uh, what was the name of that? I don't remember, but the wall resulted from it. <laughs> that had been a house once. After the wall? Yes, the, the wall China wall had been a large house, and this volcano <laughs> just wiped it out. It's, a, it's tough cleaning up after. You know what the toughest job has to be? A uh, police sketch artist in China. Yes, you're right. <laughs> Same way about us. Yes, right, yeah. of course. How yeah. you been? What have you been doing? Oh, I've been, I've been fine. I've been, been on, the, on the road, as they say? Oh, Traveling? My, not as much anymore. I'm, I'm going to cut it down. I was thinking the other day, you know, it's uh, 12 years since I started on The Tonight Show. It's been that This long. week, yeah, 12 years. The 8th of January, 71. It's hard to believe. 12 years. And since then, because you got me off on a good start. Do you remember your first appearance? Oh, do I ever. Whoever forgets What'd that. you do on your very first appearance? Do you have any I idea? did, yeah. I did, I did a thing about getting lost, uh, you know, uh, how aggravating it is to get lost in a car, and all the things that happen to you, people that give you directions, and they, uh, you know, they never hear you, huh, and all this kind of stuff. And I ended it up with a routine, which I haven't done. It was a routine, and because it was based in New York, the show was based in New York, I did right. a routine on... You know how crowded it is in the streets of New York? You can't move. You get out in the morning, you're just caught in millions of people. You, you actually had to ask them to, to push you off where you work, you know? Could you, you know what I mean? Remember, could you throw me in the Woolworth building? Thank you, I worked there, you know? So I figured out how to commit the perfect murder. What you do is you take the dead body with you and into Manhattan, and you just slip it into the crowd, and they take him for the next few weeks. <laughs> They just carry him around. Yeah. And I became the dead body. And oh, I went, yeah, started and then I started, remember, I did all the yes. things with the Rockettes. I danced with the Rockettes, and I, <laughs> I got killed crossing the street a couple times. And, Again. Yeah, and the school teacher said, who's talking? Is it that kid with the big blue face in the back, you know? <laughs> and the routine, I haven't done it since. The routine ended up, it ended up with the, with the, the dead body on the subway, looking at him. And one says the other one, uh, you see that sickle over there? The, Guy standing on the head holding a strap with his foot. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the second cop said, Yeah, but we can't do anything unless he spits or carries a lighted pipe. <laughs> That's funny. I do remember now. Yeah. Yeah. I just wonder if you'd remember your very first I'll shot. I'll tell you what I remember even more than that, Johnny. Yeah. When I did the show, I literally had $3. I don't mean I had $3 with me. I literally. Had you were dollars. broke. You were yeah, broke. broke. I mean, I had sold a wardrobe of clothes. I was always into clothes. I had sold a wardrobe of clothes for $250. I paid $210 for my rent. I had $40. It was coming down to the wire. I had three left. Now, I go on the show, and I'm walking to come out to do it, right, from the, the little dressing room. Right. And everyone's walking with me, you know, the new kid going on first time on television. And I said, uh, wait a minute, I can't go. And everyone thought he's, he's panicking. He's chickening out. You know, he's yeah. going to go on national television, the Tonight Show and all that. I said, I gotta go back. No, no, it'll be okay, you're funny. I didn't wanna hear that. Yeah, you're funny, you're funny to work. I ran in, I went in the dressing room. I left the $3 in my jeans. I didn't wanna get ripped off. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that. You never told that story, Yeah, I, I didn't wanna get ripped off because all I could think, if I fail on the Tonight Show, I still gotta get home, I gotta eat. You got three, three, three bucks. Three bucks. What a change in 12 what a, years. It's nine, 12 bucks now. Yeah, you gotta Please. And you left it in the dressing Please, room. Yeah. Easy come, Please, easy go. Yeah. Anyway, we're talking about being on the road. I didn't yeah. interrupt you, but it was interesting to think that it was 12 years ago. Oh, uh, yeah, 12 years, and on the road, and I saw it on the road. And of course, I started out in those days. I went to, you know, uh, they were, it was good to work, but the, the clubs were bad, and you stayed in these dingy hotels. That's the worst thing about the road to me. I mean, I've stayed in hotels, or like in Washington once. People in Washington, D.C., I know, commit suicide by jumping into this hotel. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the, the worst. And, and the thing about the hotels, what has happened to me? I know I'm, I'm, I'm being, I don't know if there's a psychological expression for it, but I'm being roaded out. It's like too much of the road. I gotta, I gotta lay back, because I get in these small towns, and I like playing small towns. And, uh, but you, you, I know I'm not gonna have a good time if I jump into a cab and I say to the cab driver, take me where the action is. And he drives me to the place where I'm working. <laughs> you know that or I saw something I was with Joan Rivers we saw something so funny we played in a town and they had us staying in a little town and as we're in and, and we had music with us and people and opening act and everything so so we had a lot of people so they sent a limo now we're sitting in a big stretch black limo 
And we're going through this little town. I said to Joan, you could tell this is not a, a sophisticated town. It's a nice town, but it's not sophisticated. She said, how do you know? I said, look on the corner. Every time we pass the man on the corner, he saw the limo. He'd take off his hat and hold it on. <laughs> <laughs> the only time they'd seen him was... Yeah. Oh, but I'll tell you how I wrote it out. You see, I did one smart thing, and then I'll tell you what happened, the bad thing. The smart thing I did, because I'm on the road so much, is I decorated my apartment to look like a, a motel so that I don't, I don't feel lonely when I go away from home. <laughs> I have a Don Quixote it's in your relief. Own place. Yeah, in my own place, a, a velvet Don Quixote on the wall, the Ooh. kind you want to take your shaver and shave, you know that's that? Right. And I have a little a pot of, of fake flowers on the TV that's bolted there that you can't, <laughs> you can't and a little paper strip in the, in the bathroom across the seat. I put it on every morning. <laughs> For your convenience and protection, whatever that means. Your I mean, soap, little soap wrapped? Little soap, little soaps wrapped, and you have to unwrap them. That's right. I have to unwrap them. But here's what's happened to me. This is really sick. Only because we're friends, I can tell you. This is really, this is sick. You know what I do sometimes? Because you get in like a real small town, and yeah. there's nothing happening. And I'm a night person, and it's getting late at night, and television goes off. I see the last one, uh, you know, Thought for Tomorrow, whatever it is, a sermonette, and, uh, I don't mean to be, let me get off for a second. I'm going to tell you something. I don't mean to be sacrilegious by this. I saw something a few weeks. I got to tell you this, then I'll tell you. <laughs> a, and and, and every, every town has one. It doesn't matter where you are. It happened to be in a small town in Wyoming or in a medium sized town. But anyway, the end of the day always ends with sermonette, thought for tomorrow, meditation, whatever it's called. Right. It's always the same. A man of cloth comes out, right? And uh, dee -dee -dee, nice little music. And, and then little plastic clouds went behind them. <laughs> Uh, and it, it, maybe it's me. I've watched these for years. I don't understand what they're saying. I watched this man closely. He came out, and this is verbatim. He said, good evening, which reminds me of a story. Okay. I met a man the other day. He didn't know whether to buy black shoes or brown shoes, whether to get rubber heels and soles or leather heels and soles. And that's what life is. <laughs> Four o'clock in the morning, I'm crawling around. What would I bring? Sneakers? I bought sneakers. <laughs> I don't know what he meant. But he, and then he went on with shoe analogies. All right, here's what's happening to me. This is banana time. You're here's what I do. Just in time. Yeah, I'm telling yeah. you, I'm really... Here's what's happening to me. You know what I do to occupy my mind? Sick. I sit in these hotel rooms, these motel rooms. Sometimes, not all the time. And I look around the room. And I try to figure out who and what made the marks and stains. Especially those on the ceiling. Yes. Those go. Isn't it going? Yes, right it's away. It's going. Gray matter. And you just sit and try to figure yeah, out what said, took Ooh, place. Whip. Sheep marks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you, you're getting out just in time, Dave. Yes, you're I know. just on the edge. All right, we're going to take a break here, and we'll be right back. Have pity.